I've been a storyteller and writer ever since I was very young. I knew that that was my career. But I was very shy, as many women were of my generation, and didn't expect to be accepted as a writer. But when the flowering of folk music in the United States had began to have a tremendous effect on American popular music, I, by a very good accident, happened to be close to the people involved. And I knew that this was a very fine medium for me, popular songs. And so I started writing them. And because I was close to people like Pete Seeger, Woody Guthrie, Harry Belafonte, and others, Joan Baez, my songs were picked up and used by these fine singers. I don't suppose you like the term protest song. You're right, so I don't what kind of it. songs do you write? I write songs about everything that interests me. And sometimes I have things to complain about, but not always. I write love songs and fun songs. And it's because I care about people that I protest uh, against their mistreatment mistreatment of the world, of the animals, and of the air. I write songs about these things. So you get new ideas for new songs every day, I suppose? Well, not every day. Maybe, let's say, once a week or once a month. But enough so that uh, whenever I come to a concert, I usually have a new song at work. And my audience really participates in the song because I bring it to them raw and we may discuss the reaction or have some ideas about it. So they feel as though it's part of their own doing. It's very nice. What kind of topics do you uh, write about these days? Well, one of my latest ones was about a little mouse who got into the electric system of the uh, central clearinghouse in Buenos Aires a few weeks ago. and messed up, short-circuited the computers so that the whole banking system was stopped by this little mouse. And uh, everyone who saw this news item was delighted because we've all been annoyed by the growing impersonalization of businesses' relationship with people. We don't talk to people anymore. We talk to computers, and they don't answer. They just go ahead and do what they do. So people enjoyed this instance of the power of a small creature to confound big business. So that was my latest, my latest song. Suppose you, you can be considered to be part of the American political song movement. Can you tell us something about it, as we in Finland tend to get the impression that there is no such thing? Yes, well, uh, you, your impression is correct. As a movement, there really is no such movement. The American working class is not very political, and they are not used to singing. It's not part of their way of life. They're used to being entertained. They sit in front of television and someone sings for them. So that you will not find in these, this, in these times songs at union meetings, songs at strikes. There are some individuals who are writing topical songs, commentary. But it's not a movement, really. It's just the work of, of individuals who are moved and touched by what's happening and write about it. Uh, has there ever been a movement? Yes, I, in the older days, when the American working class still was connected by its roots with the countries from which it came, yeah. from Finland, from Italy, from Mexico, these people had a strong trade union back, background, a strong political understanding, and they all sang. And that still remains. There are traces of that still in parts of the movement. For instance, the agricultural workers. Yes. Most of the Mexicans still sing at their meetings and in their demonstrations. It's a beautiful thing.